And what brings you out here today? Well, we're out here to show our support to thousands of law-abiding, tax-paying Canadians who have come to the nation's capital to peacefully assemble and express their point of view. They need to be heard, and we're here to listen. Now, there have been people out here from Alberta, constituents who have come across the country from uh, your neck of the woods. What is it you make of people going that distance to be here? Yeah, I think that uh, this this shows that pe that Canadians want to be heard. And and I have a number of constituents who I, I, I've been meeting with and plan to meet with throughout the day who are saying, look, it's time for decision makers to listen. We're, we're never going to agree on, on, on everything, but it's time that uh, the decision makers understand that there are those that are frustrated with the status quo. It's time to make some changes, time to discuss what a path back to normal looks like. Canadians deserve that. You know, it's been a very, very difficult two years with COVID, but it's time to uh, ensure that we have those conversations about how we can do things like respect freedom, respect rights, respect the fact that uh, there are those that are losing their livelihoods. It is absurd that, uh, you know, when it comes to the, the, the auspices of, the, of, of what started this rally, the fact that uh, the truck drivers who were heralded as heroes even months ago are now losing their livelihoods. And I've spoken to some of those truck drivers and it is absolutely heartbreaking that, uh, that because of a, 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 an edict from Ottawa that these, these heroes would, would lose their livelihoods. A lot of people who are here feel not only like they're not being heard by Trudeau, but also by their provincial governments, and, and even in cases by the opposition, by the Conservatives. So how is it that you make sure these people are heard in a way that isn't just about today, but longer term as we go through a government response to COVID? Yeah. Well, Conservatives have been clear. We have opposed these mandates all along. And I'm going to do what I can do, and I know Damien will do the same, to take the voices of truckers and everyday Canadians who are here back to the House of Commons to, so that Justin Trudeau gets the message. I mean, these mandates uh, have been a complete uh, disaster. They make no sense. Uh, they're not keeping anyone safe, but what they are doing is they are punitive. They're ruining people's lives and livelihoods. And not only that, uh, with respect to the, uh, the mandates for the truckers, it's exacerbating the serious supply chain issues that we face in this country. So uh, in terms of the cost of essentials, uh, uh, the produce on our grocery shelves, uh, it's going to get a lot worse and that's going to hurt everyday Canadians. So we got to stand up and go back to the House and uh, do put all the pressure on the government to reverse course. And what do you think of the big takeaway is? What's the message that you even take as an MP when you leave this group here? It's time for decision makers to start listening because uh, we can hear that their message is be being shouted loud and clear here in Ottawa. And it's the same message that I think uh, has been ignored throughout much of, uh, of certainly the last number of months. And it's time for decision makers to start listening. Certainly myself and I know Michael and Conservatives are making sure that we are doing that listening so that we can have that path back to normal, that we can respect the fact that Canadians are, are tired, ready to move forward. And uh, that's certainly the message that I, that I plan to take to the House of Commons on Monday.